Hey everyone, I'm excited to share with you what I've been working on for the past four years. My book, Logos and Liberation, is available now through Amazon and other major distributors. This book is a culmination of years of study spanning fields from economics and social science to philosophy, metaphysics, history, and theology. My analysis is centered on the Logos, the transcendent ordering principle according to which the, lo the cosmos unfolds, by which we ourselves are able to reason about the cosmos. I begin with the myth of the fall in Genesis. I put forth my own interpretation of how we've fallen into patterns of hierarchy, domination, and exploitation. The original sin, I suggest, is a kind of grasping for control. We build systems of domination to manipulate others to do our bidding. Patriarchy, slavery, empire. Society became a vast machine, what Lewis Mumford called the mega machine, in which society was to be rationally ordered from above in service of the sovereign. These systems of, these systems of domination are idols a false logos that corrupts the soul and draws us away from the true logos. The ancient mega-machine was challenged by the traditions of what became known as the Axial Age, when philosophy and world religions as we know them began to emerge. These systems of thought conceived of a, a transcendent logos beyond the, uh, the despotic dictates of the state. They did not challenge the state directly, but saw an authority beyond that of any earthly ruler to which society must be properly ordered. This new vision became a standard according to which earthly power could be judged and found wanting. Yet this Logos was still contested territory, and traditional authority could still assert its right to rule as being in accord with the order, with the order of things. With the Enlightenment, authority itself, rational and secular, came under rational scrutiny. Reason was exalted as the greatest reflection of the divine. Yet at the same time, market forces were advancing a new form of instrumental rationality. A new mega machine emerged, this time without a sovereign at its center, but only the competitive pursuit of profit, prestige, and power. Power itself became commodified and quantified as capital. A technocratic rationality prevailed, in which society and nature alike were seen in mechanistic terms as something to be engineered according to metrics of bureaucratic efficiency and profitability. Scientism and economism rose together, reducing reality to a quantitative data efficient causality, and instrumental rationality. The mega machine pervaded all life, overcoding everything according to this new logos. This mega machine can only survive by expanding. Its logos is exploitation. It must continue exploiting people and resources to further its expansion. It extended itself not only through the capitalist mode of production, but also into anti-capitalist ways of thought through the Soviet model of centralized planning. The capitalist West and the Soviet East may have disagreed about markets, profit, and, the, and private enterprise, but they each in their own way bought into the mega machine. Now, each subscribed to authoritarian techniques, in which production and efficiency were treated as supreme goods to which autonomy and personal well-being were subsumed. Mass production, industrial agriculture, centralized power sources, and human warehousing are just a few manifestations of this authoritarian techniques in which people are treated as resources and inputs in a vast system of production that exists for its own sake. Cities are designed first for economic activity, not for human thriving. A global system of nation states, corporations, and international organizations governs the world as a single global empire in which different parties compete for control of resources, labor, supply chains, and markets. All human and natural life is subjected to this relentless feeding frenzy of power and control. This toxic, exploitative system threatens the very future of human survival. Climate change and the ecological crisis are intertwined with a vast polycrisis of exploitation, inequality, imperialism, colonialism, state repression, and genocide. Another way is possible. The false logos of the mega machine can only be overcome by rediscovering the true logos, which can be known by the sign of kenosis or self-emptying. Rather than a mechanistic cosmos, we find an organic order characterized by self-organization, habit, memory, and creativity. Where the mega machine imposes, the logos unfolds, creating through cooperation and integration. The mechanistic paradigm has remade nature in the image of the machine, but by studying nature's unfolding process, we can instead build a more organic society. This does not mean retreated fr retreating from technology or social institutions, but sub uh, uh, subtracting, as it were, the human footprint of the world. Rather, it means realigning our, our institutions according to the logos of nature, so that the human impact on the world is a, harmonious, is a harmonious one rather than an exploitative one. 
Murray Bookchin posited that our relationship with nature is a function of our social relations. A logos of domination and control over one another will necessarily lead us to treat nature in the same way. By the same token, healing our relationship with the earth will require overcoming exploitative relations with humanity. An ethos of cooperation at, uh, with humans and with nature must prevail. Instead of competing nations, uh, territorial nation states led by oligarchs, we can have municipal confederations led by popular councils. Instead of industrialized farming based on monoculture that extracts fertility from the soil and, and destroys the environment with runoff from fertilizer and pesticides, we need regenerative permaculture that restores fertility to the land and is continuous with natural ecosystems. Instead of cities based on uh, uh, organized by technocratic planners and developers, we can have democratically planned cities in which local communities enjoy autonomy and self-determination. Instead of a system of infinite growth based on competition for resources, we can restore the commons and collectively enjoy its bounty. We must reorient our values from those of acquisition and getting ahead to those of thriving and self-actualization. Education must shift from job training to personal formation. Work itself must transform from a means of subsistence to a creative pedagogical endeavor. The metric of utility must give way to personal dignity and that quality known as eudaimonia, which means happiness, not as pleasant mood, but as fulfillment and thriving. I propose a teleology based on that which we need both personally and collectively to thrive. Alignment with the Logos does not mean conformity to a single life path, but a respect for the vast diversity of personal telos. Nature thrives on diversity. That is how ecology works. Society, too, must become ecological by supporting the unique needs and gifts of each person. Religion, too, must transform. The Axi religions arose in protest of the ancient mega-machine, but became instruments of oppression in their own right. Religion has long been used as a shield for power and authority, but we must, must not forget that, that the religious imagination can point the way toward liberation. Religion must undergo its own kenosis, letting go of clericalism and authoritarianism, and instead create space for the spirit's movement within the people. A kenotic faith in the Logos is necessary to displace the idolatrous faith in the mega-machine. Together we must hold to faith in the world to come. The mega machine limits the imagination, keeping us trapped in technocratic fixes to the problems produced by the system itself. The world to come brings fire to the imagination, showing us the ephemerality of the current world and the hope for the world as it should be. We must work together to build a world in which many worlds fit, in which all have a chance to thrive. We must create a resilient system based on cooperation in which we bring our talents and abilities together for the betterment of all. Beyond the limitations of our time, beyond oppressive systems of domination and control, the eschaton awaits, and we can once again be made whole.